um, we are going to be making additional copies and uh, my intention is that we provide these to our deputies uh, as something to hand out to the public if we do make contact with them. So there's lots of information out there including right in the front of your phone book on how to prepare for emergencies. Uh, this is uh, an historic time but based on uh, my time up at Howard Forest over this weekend, there are some very dedicated professionals out there working on this. And uh, it, you know, if they have one request right now is uh, there are a lot of calls for information going in. They are doing the very best they can to get that information out. In this internet tech savvy generation we have, everyone wants to just punch in something on the internet and get instant feedback. There is so much going on. Uh, that they can't reasonably provide it that quickly. But just know that they are doing an excellent job. Uh, your emergency services system is working, uh, and we are constantly looking for ways to make it work better. At, at this time, there's no communications towers which are threatened, and as far as we know, there's been no injuries or deaths involved in any of the fires countywide. Okay. Questions from the board? Concerns? Discussion? Mr. CEO. I might mention following up on the under sheriff's comments. Uh, recently, the governor uh, made available to, uh, was it 11 or 13 counties, funding for a reverse 911 system, as we call it. The county was awarded approximately $117,000 to purchase that system. The sheriff's department has taken the lead. We are in the process of selecting a vendor. And uh, one of the hooks to that money is it has to be operational within 90 days. So, and that's from a June 5th date. So uh, by, let's see, July, August, September 5th, we should have a uh, working reverse 911 system. And what that does is with your GIS, your geographical information system, you can draw a circle around an area and it will phone call everybody in that area and give them evacuation orders or notices of emergencies and so forth. So we do hope to have that up within that 90 day requirement uh, that the governor's placed upon us for funding. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Um, members of the public wishing to speak, uh, express concerns, or address this item that's before us, please step forward, state your name for the record. I'm Chris Brown, I'm the Air Pollution Control Officer for Mendocino County. Um, I just did hear uh, that the state has uh, arrived at our offices with four portable monitors. Uh, we're going to be setting those up at Anderson Valley Fire in Boonville. There will be one at our office. We're going to look for a location in Hoplin, perhaps at CDF Fire. And uh, another monitor is going to go to Willits for the short term. These are portable battery powered monitors. Um, we're going to be moving them around to where the hot spots are so we can get some evidence of what's going on out there. Um, what I saw this morning uh, in Ukiah Valley was visibility down to three quarters of a mile. That is our most serious uh, level when you look at our charts and our tables. Uh, we did issue an advisory yesterday. We issued an alert this morning at 9 a.m. Um, in the future, we're going to be issuing those through the public health uh, department in coordination with the public health officer. So there'll be a joint advisory coming out from uh, both agencies um, through the CEO's office as well. And uh, uh, it's pretty bad out there um, all around the county that I've been over the last weekend. The smoke is pretty thick, and it is going to start affecting people if it's not already. Um, encourage people to limit their outdoor activities, um, and definitely don't go jogging, bicycle riding. Bring your children outside and take your baby for a stroll. We've seen that this morning as well. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Brown. Mr. Chair, I uh, neglected to inform you uh, a situation that I, a, a decision I made yesterday at, at 2.22 p.m. after account, viewing the county uh, via air and after conferring with CAL FIRE, I have declared a local state of emergency that I notified the CEO and advised him of. Okay. For the record, thank you, Sheriff. Yeah, other members of the public? Um, concerns? Questions of the press? Um, Threatened is about 525, and uh, five have been destroyed. We do have a map uh, for the public and, and the press that you can take a look. This is unprecedented. It's uh, one corner of the county to the other. Um, there will be little marks. You can take a look at the map. That's representing uh, probably 60 percent of the total fire activity in the county. Not all the fires are on that map. So 
Supervisor. Sheriff, I wonder, uh, you push push your button, Dan. Excuse me. Thanks. Sheriff, you mentioned uh, the South Coast, but uh, you, you didn't go down far enough. I'm, I'm wondering what information do you have uh, for activity back in behind Point Arena there? Po uh, people have been calling me saying that uh, they don't know if people have been reporting fires down there. And uh, it's just kind of a hodgepodge of uh, concerns. Supervisor Colfax, we know there's a series of fires that are within the Mendocino Forest Products uh, timberland mm -hmm. uh, east of Highway 1. Uh, as far as I know, there has been no firefighting attempt on these. They're in heavily wooded areas and no fire apparatus has arrived at the scene yet. I think that would be the farthest south uh, fire you would have. With, uh, but please remember we have just ordered a, an evacuation of nine miles in high, on Mountain View Road, uh, the Jacks Fire and, and the Tribble Fire. Uh, when I flew yesterday, I saw the smoke actually drifting to the south. And so it's causing a great deal of smoke to get into the Point Arena area and the, and the valleys. And so that's creating the panic that we're, we're hoping to alleviate and, uh, and telling people that w what we believe, we believe the fires that are of the biggest concern for structures and for public safety are being prioritized by CAL FIRE and that's where the resources are being sent. And so the fires that are creating the smoke, uh, the fire apparatus isn't there yet and that's why we expect this fire the, the situation to continue for at least four weeks or so. But with that in mind, I, I want you to know that there's some r local radio stations that are being staffed 24-7 uh, by, by people who are absolutely concerned about our public safety. And I want to talk about KZYX, I want to talk about KOZT, that are get it, getting the immediate information to the public and it's allowing us to deal with other things. So I, I hope that the board recognizes how important the public radio stations we have in this county are. Thank you. If there's smoke and you have any doubt if it's been reported, report it. That's the best thing to do. Uh, they are not going to argue with over-reporting. And uh, two, two items that I forgot to make mention. The Mendocino National Forest right alongside our eastern county border has 50 additional fires. Um, they too are lacking resources to extinguish those fires. With the north wind, that brings that smoke down into our inhabited areas. So uh, just for uh, information. And the priorities Cal Fire has established, they have three priorities. One is for life safety of the public and the firefighters. Two is protection and saving of structures. And three is to attack new fires only if they are assured that they're gonna be able to suppress them immediately. So grouping up the resources is their tactic to attack uh, on a much larger scale. Uh, individual resources are to attack only the smallest fires that they can put out themselves. So those are the three priorities established by CAL FIRE. Supervisor. One of the problems that we have in Mendocino County is the, our number of loggers out there in the county probably does the number one where we used to have 20, 20 years ago. And uh, those loggers used to have a lot of fire suppression equipment actually was required. And that's a big labor force and labor pool that we don't have out there. Uh, thank God for the few loggers that we do have, but uh, it's not comparable to what we had 10, 20 years ago. And, and we're, uh, not only the county, but the CAL FIRE, but the Forest Service is sorely missing those uh, pieces of equipment and then those experienced uh, firefighters their, in their abilities. So uh, that's just an element we don't have anymore. Thank you, Supervisor. 